What's up guys, eDrone here. One of the most exciting FPV products for 2023 is finally here. Stay tuned. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit longer video than usual. So I put timestamps in the description. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unbox these and it comes wrapped in a nice uh, cellophane wrap. You can see that we have the description of the contents inside the box. I also purchased the analog module. We'll be looking at that a little bit later. Nice clean box. Go ahead and open it up. You are greeted with the, this HD Zero card. And if you flip it over, it's actually a quick start guide. Super handy. Really like that. Put that off to the side. We're going to take a look at the accessories here. You get one box. And this has your microfiber cleaning cloth, your firmware update cable, as well as Divi Mask stickers, the HD Zero strap for the goggle, your XT60 to barrel connector, your wide face plate, and your foam pad, as well as two adhesive strips. And you get a really nice HD Zero bag, felt lined. Okay, taking a look at the main event here. Here it is, guys, the HD Zero goggles. Wow, really like the look of these. They actually look sleeker than I was thinking they would. You have four SMA connectors on here. And on the bottom, we have quite a bit going on here. You have HDMI in, so you can go ahead and run like a walk snail or uh, any other input for HDMI. You have HDMI out, so if you want to run this to an external uh, screen, you can go ahead and, and run HDMI out so you can have see what's going on in the goggles on a different display. We have a micro SD card slot. We have a firmware update cable slot. We also have a headphone microphone combo jack, which you can use to either hook up an external microphone to record your audio. There's also a built-in microphone inside the goggles as well to record your audio. Or you can go ahead and plug in a set of headphones or earbuds and you can have a um, microphone on your drone and you can actually listen to the audio of the drone. We have a analog three and a half millimeter AV input for running like a ground station. I really like the way that everything is very clearly labeled. All right, taking a look at the optics of the HD Zero goggle. We have full HD, 1080p, 90 hertz adaptive OLED displays that are going to give us a really nice, crisp, clean image. And they have a massive 46 degree field of view, which is really immersive. All right, taking a look at the top of the goggle, you can see we have a scroll wheel for the menu system and as well as a push button on the other side and they feel really of nice good quality taking a look at the two face plates that come with the hd zero goggle we have a narrower face plate which is on the goggle and a wider uh, face plate the wider one does not fit my face so i'm going to go ahead and use the narrow face plate but go ahead and pick whichever one works for you all right so to go ahead and get your uh, foam padding installed go ahead and take your little velcro strip peel off the back sticky paper, and you're gonna to wanna to line this up on the goggle, make sure it's lined up correctly, make sure it's pushed all the way down around the nose piece so that it's not gonna be moving on you. Then go ahead and take your, your foam pad here, and you want the foam side facing outward, and then you're gonna go ahead and line that up, and it should line it right up into place and, and attach. And if you need to take it back off, you can, no problem. All right, going to go ahead and install the HD Zero strap, which is really simple. I like this new design. You basically just push it through the little clasp here, which is metal, and then you just snap it into place. Go ahead and get the other side connected and make sure to pull off the little paper lens cover here on your lenses. All right, let's take a look at the IPDs now. I really like this new design. I feel like they don't move as easy as my HDO2s did. Um, so you can slide them to the right or the left to line them up with your eyes. And then um, for the IPD adjustment, you have 57 to 70 millimeters. And for the adjustment for the focus range, you have a plus six to minus six for the diopters. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to install the antennas for the HD Zero goggle. Now these antennas do not come with the goggle. You have to purchase these separately. And special shout out to Ryan Quillett for um, his recommendation on this particular antenna setup. And I'm gonna put links down in the video description for everything you see in the video. Also, a uh, special shout out to Fly High FPV. Check out flyhighfpv.com. Uh, I had him, uh, Dave print me out these mounts here that will snap right onto the rail system of the HD Zero goggle. 
All right, go ahead and remove the little plastic covers that are on top of your SMA connectors. And I'm going to go ahead and install the two Lumineer uh, stubby right-hand circular polarized. You can use left-hand circular polarized as well. Just make sure that whatever you use, you match up on your quadcopter. And they are SMA connectors. So just as long as they are SMA, go ahead and screw those on the top. And you can see it has a nice low-profile design here. Now, we're going to go ahead and get ready the patches to install them. So I did have uh, Fly High FPV print me out these little 3D printed adapters, but actually I found out that I don't even really need those. Um, I'm able to screw this on without using those. So you'll see that when I install those later, they're not going to be on there. But go ahead and take the patch antenna and basically it just sticks right onto the mount using the little uh, sticky back. And you can either slide it on like this or... You can actually slide it back off and you can actually just pop it on. You'll hear it click into place and lock it on that way. And once you have it on the little rail system, which I think is really nice, by the way, I like the rail system. You can go ahead and um, screw in your antenna right here. And, and as you can see, I removed the adapters, no problem. I have both of them installed. And this is a nice low profile design, which is going to be able to go in my bag uh, and, and, and not have to mess with taking antennas on or off. I really like the look of this. This is the battery that I'm going to be using to power the HD Zero goggle. And uh, this was recommended by Ryan Quillet, And I'll put a link down in the description for this. But this is a lithium ion pack. And as you can see, it fits perfectly in the side of the strap and plugs right in. No issues there. All right, now let's go ahead and get ready to install our analog bay module here. Now you have to buy this separately. Um, this is the version one. And there's going to be a version two coming out that's actually uh, Wi Fi capable. But here's a little screw that comes with the, the module here. So if you want to actually screw it on and have a more permanent connection, you can use that. I'm not going to be using the screw for my purposes. But taking a look at the little little bay module here, you see it has a, a the pin connector here for your rapid fire or your fusion or whatever you want to use that has the pins. And then it has the pins on the other side that are going to basically plug into the HD0 goggle. And uh, I really do like this design, even though it does stick out a little bit. It, it's, it seems like a, it's a really good solid connection. So I'm using the Rapid Fire here, the, the Immersion RC Rapid Fire module. And once you line the pins up, make sure you have them lined up. Push them in until you get four snaps there on the top and bottom. Make sure that the cover is completely snapped in. Okay, once you have it in and you know it's secure, now you're ready to go ahead and remove the little cover here on the left side of the HD Zero goggle. And that's going to reveal your little uh, pin connector here for the analog bay module. Now, I found that this actually lines up really good for me. I didn't have any issues with it not lining up properly or anything like that. Um, and once you have it lined up, make sure it's straight. And then just kind of push it in until you hear that snap. And it's a very loud snap. You can't miss that snap. Once you hear that snap, you know you have it seated properly and it's going to have a good connection and it's connected to the goggle properly. All right, so that's what it looks like with the analog bay on the side. And here's a comparison of my HDO2s on the left and the HD0 goggles on the right. You can see a little bit of comparison here with the size and form factor. Even though the HD0 goggle is wider, I feel like it's way less deep now. Let's go ahead and put this on the scale. This is with the battery that I use on the side, 553 grams with the battery. Now let's go ahead and remove the battery. So if you want to do a battery in your pocket, uh, you can get it down to about 402 grams, 466 grams with the rapid fire module with the patch that I have. All right, just for reference, here's my HDO2 goggles. And you can see they're coming in at 390 grams with the HD Zero uh, Fat Shark module, and then with the analog module, 432 grams. The analog bay module weighs 12.9 grams, and then the rapid fire with the patch that I have here is 51 grams. And then the rapid fire without the patch antenna is 32 grams. All in all, I really love the look of this goggle. It just looks absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and go over the fitment of the goggle. I'm going to go ahead and put it on. As you can see, it fits really good. I've got the strap and the battery connected on the side. Um, 
wearing the goggle on top of my head does not feel uncomfortable. Doesn't feel bad at all. Feels very uh, form fitting. I do feel a little bit of extra weight over my normal setup and that's mainly because of the battery on the side. Um, and these goggles are a little bit heavier, but actually not really that much because of the module I was using on my fat sharks. Go ahead and pull this down so you can kind of see how they look while I'm wearing them. And I like to have my strap just a little bit angled above on my on the back of my head, like kind of like that. And you can see I've got it fit. I've got zero light leakage. I don't have any light leakage whatsoever with this particular narrow faceplate. And I love the fact that the, the area around the nose seems to be a little bit wider than with my Fast Sharks. So I know with my Fast Sharks, when I had the goggles, um, I felt a little bit of a nose pinch at the top of my nose. Here, I don't feel any nose pinch whatsoever. I can breathe fine. No issues with that. This has to be probably one of the most comfortable goggles I have ever worn. It just feels so premium. It feels amazing to wear. And I know that it's going to just create for a way more immersive experience um, just because of the comfort level of this goggle. So for comfort level, I will definitely give this a 10 out of 10 uh, compared to what I've used in the past. Now I'll show you the... Uh, Fat Sharks HDO2s with the HD0 module. Okay, so you can see what these look like. I'll do a side by side comparison of these. There is so much to like about these goggles. Uh, the menu system just feels super intuitive. It feels, it feels well thought out. It just feels like that everything has just had a lot of thought put into it and the menu just feels very easy to navigate. There's so many different options in there to, to go through and I'm really excited about that menu system. The Linux operating system that runs on these goggles is fantastic. It is the one of the best UIs that I've ever got to experience and I love the jog wheel on top. It just feels so satisfying. It feels like it's a really great quality um, I love the, the, the positive reinforcement of the buttons. They just feel very premium. Okay, let's take a look at the HD Zero Overlay display here. On the top right-hand corner, we have four signal strength bars indicating the str signal strength of the four antennas. Next to that, we have a video quality link measured in a number there. And then on the top left, we have a fan with a fan speed currently uh, displayed. And then we have a little padlock, which indicates that the uh, video transmitter is now locked and synced with the HD Zero goggles. Just going to kind of fly kind of slow. I kind of want to see the details of the screens right now. Just kind of see uh, some of the branches and stuff. See, we have a lot of scraggle right now. But first thing I'm noticing is it's way more crisp. The, the screens are way crisper than uh, my HDO2s. And I'll put a little bit of sample of the goggle audio as well. You can kind of hear that. But a little bit of break up over here. Not too bad. Uh, I am using the stubbies here, so but the, uh, the picture looks really good. The colors look really nice. And as far as the, the latency and everything, it feels it feels good. Um, I'm not gonna say it fly a little bit more so I can kind of do a little bit of freestyle here. See how it's feeling with that. Okay, not too bad. Back over here, I always tend to get a little bit of rainbows right around that bush. And while I am getting some sparkles, it's definitely not unflyable. Try to keep my head pointed up. Go around the side so we can really kind of see that break up. Now you can really see it now. But still, I mean, totally flyable. Just a little bit of speckle right there. 
let's take a look at some of these like signs and stuff in the light. I gotta say the low light performance of this system is really impressive, guys. Really impressive of the low light performance. And I can actually see like the individual blades of grass. Yeah, the screens just make a huge difference with the image quality for me. Um, with my HDO2s, it kind of looked like a little bit of like a screen effect, where the screens kind of looked like you could kind of see a little bit of a screen door almost. Not really getting that with these. It just feels way more crisp, way more clear. Really impressed with the with this so far, guys. Got to say. Definitely feels really locked in. Uh, no issues there. Feels very in sync with my flying. I'm going to do a little bit more maneuvers here. But yeah, so far it feels really good. And the detail seems to be uh, pretty good as well. The, this is the Micro V2 camera. This is the uh, HD0 uh, Micro V2. Over here, we usually get some breakup over here as well. I'm going to try to go around and see if we can make it all the way around. Um, I am, like I said, I am using the patches and the stubbies. So right around this area, it normally gets really bad. Okay, it's fighting through. It's fighting through. Not bad. Oh, wow. I have to do, like, some testing with the... Uh, We'll do some comparisons with my HDO2s and the uh, and the module, but yeah, this this seems to be a little bit better. I think it seems to be a little bit better, actually. It's weird because the breakup seems to be like a little bit different, and I don't know if that's the screen resolution, just because the screen resolution is a little bit different. But, yeah, I mean, I'm totally able to go all the way around, and it's definitely not unflyable. Uh, this back corner here is the worst, and it's pushing through, so I'm really impressed with that. So this will be kind of like a low-light first impressions flight test, and then I'm going to do some comparison as well. This, ba this battery is just about finished. I actually don't have an action camera on it, so able to get a decent little flight time here. Let's kind of look at those details again, like in the grass. I'm going to look at this tree some more, too. It just, overall, it just seems way more crisp. Like, the HD just seems way more crisp than on my uh, HDO2s. Like, the details really pop. Like you, I can see all the scraggle here. Like, no issues, right? Just keep it on my battery voltage, but I, I don't think I would be able to fly in this scraggle as confidently in low lighting with the HDO2s. I just don't think that would even be possible. But you can see I'm flying right through. I can see the branches, like every little branch. Wow. First impressions, I'm really impressed with the quality. Wow. Really impressed so far. And especially in low lighting as well. I, I know it's going to look even better when it's brighter out. But I would say this is definitely a substantial upgrade uh, from the HDO2s with the Fat Shark uh, or the HD0 module. Yeah, look. I mean, look at the details there. I mean, I can see so much more. I feel like my confidence is going to be way higher with this system now that these goggles look at this light post right here i mean look at that that's so clear wow i can still smell that really good smell from the uh the foam and the goggles and that, that new goggle smell i love that yeah so i'm going to put some samples in and out of the audio from the microphone built into the goggles I will say, like, outside, the fan noise is not bothering me at all. I'm not having any issues with the fan noise. I have it set to auto at the current time. And it looks like it's on level 4 right now. Um, 
definitely hasn't been bothering me at all. I actually would rather have a little bit more fans, especially because I sweat a lot and I tend to fog up my screens uh, pretty good. So I'm actually happy that the fans are so powerful. It really helps. I'm going to take a look at this bench right here. You can kind of see the detail in this. Wow. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is definitely an upgrade from what I've been flying. Uh, I can just tell you already, just from looking through these screens, that it's a it's definitely an upgrade. Definitely a substantial upgrade on the quality for me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back here. All right, now it's time to do the DVR comparison. You can see I have the antennas oriented in the same way to keep this test as consistent as possible. One thing I did notice is that the SharkBite VRX uh, seemed to have a little bit more of the speckled rainbow effect um, upon sitting and then during throughout the duration of the flight. All right, around this tree here, the static is going to get a little bit worse. Um, I'm now flying behind myself. There's lots of Wi-Fi, uh, concrete. Uh, all, all kinds of RF nightmares. And you can kind of see how they both uh, handle the breakup. I'm going to go ahead and slow this down to a quarter of speed. That way you can kind of see the comparison between the two, the goggle versus the SharkBite VRX. And you can kind of see how they both handle the breakup. Um, I will say they're very, very similar. I would say that there's a slight possible edge with the HD Zero goggle. It seems to handle the interference a little bit better in some areas. However, it's not a drastic amount from this test. Um, and the only difference between the two goggles is the placement of the goggle. So the SharkBite VRX goggle, the HDO2s, are actually sitting a little bit lower than where I'm standing. That's the only difference really in this test other than the goggle and the VRX. But you can kind of see right around this corner here, you still see a little bit more speckle with the SharkBite VRX. And then at the end there, it just seemed like the SharkBite VRX had a little bit more uh, breakup than the HD Zero goggle did. One thing also you'll notice is that I think the colors are a little bit more uh, vibrant on the HD Zero goggle. Make sure you turn up your resolution so you can really get the full benefit of comparing these two images. I really do think that this goggle is going to change the FPV community in such a positive way. There's so many awesome people that have already contributed to this project, and there's going to be more because this is open source. This is an open source FPV goggle. This is the best FPV goggle for the community, by the community. The one missing link that I had with my FPV, um, I've been using the HDO2s, you know, with the with the Fat Shark module for a while now, and it's been working okay. I, I can't complain, but this just feels like the missing link. This is what my HD Zero FPV system was missing. And I'm gonna put links down in the video description for everything that I've uh, I've featured in this video, all the antenna setups. I'm gonna also link to a couple other awesome uh, videos that I've seen with regards to the HD Zero goggles. So make sure you check those out. Make sure you check out the links below. Let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about this goggle. And let me tell you, I really had to nitpick and really think hard about these things. Um, these things are very trivial and very minor, so keep that in mind. No way, shape, or form 
is the things that I dislike about this goggle anywhere close to how much of the things I like about it. But just like with any product out there, there has to be some things that, you know, you, you nitpick or some things that you don't like, some things that you could, you know, approve upon. So let me talk about the power button here. So the power button, I like that there's a power button here. It's really nice. I can feel it with my finger. It's easy to turn on um, when I have the goggles over my, my eyes. It's easy to turn the switch on. However, when I have my cable plugged in for my battery lead, I find it a little bit harder to turn the power button off. So when I go to, to put my finger to turn the power button off, I feel like it gets um, a little bit difficult between the sliding the button backward and then getting in between the barrel connector that comes on the goggle. So the second thing that I don't want to say, I don't want to say that I don't really like it about the goggle, but I was ex kind of expecting something different, um, is the paint scheme. So everywhere on the goggle where you see it's not white, I was under the impression that it was actually going to be black. Um, just from some of the forums on the Facebook group, I was under the impression that that was actually going to be black. Uh, and it's more like a deep, dark green, uh, greenish kind of hue. Uh, some people have been calling it like army green. Um, I don't think it looks bad. Not at all. It was a little bit different than what I had expected. So I wanted to go ahead and bring that up. One of the reasons that I really am wanted these goggles is the fact that not only is it an amazing product, but the people behind this product are amazing. Carl Zhao, Ryan Quillett, and there's a, there's a plenty of other people involved in the HD Zero goggle project. And it goes without saying that this you're supporting by getting this goggle. Not only are you getting a, a fantastic, amazing product, you're also supporting fantastic and amazing people. Um, these people have just gone above and beyond to get us this product through all the hurdles that's been going on over in China. I don't know if you guys have been aware, but there's been crazy things going on over there. And with the shipping has been restricted. And believe it or not, Carl Zhao and members of the HD Zero team were actually shuttling, carrying these goggles on a bullet train miles and miles away to get these things shipped out because a lot of the uh, shipping locations near where they were were shut down. They were restricting how many items they could send. And I just think that's amazing. When you have a team that is that dedicated to a product, it's amazing. I am so happy to be able to help and support these goggles. And now that the fact that the price has dropped even more, guys, $495 for these goggles, that hands down has got to be one of the best value goggles on the market today. The fact that we have HD Zero built in, we have analog if we want to use it, we have HDMI input if we want to use, you know, walk snail or I mean, it just blows my mind. We have this kind of technology with this many options packed in, built into this goggle. I think this is definitely going to be one of the best, if not the best product, FPV product for 2023. I'm so excited to be a part of this. And uh, just stay tuned to the channel because we're going to have plenty of content, you know, coming more on the HD Zero goggle. I can't wait to bring you guys along for the ride. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please like, share, subscribe, and there's going to be more HD Zero goggle videos to come on the channel. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. E-Drone, out.